Um, through the powers of peer observation and questioning climbers throughout the uh, years, I have uh, compiled a short list as to why climbers cannot progress their climbing to the next grade. Uh, specifically speaking, uh, V8 and below climbers, uh, predominantly speaking around the V40 to V5 climbing range. Now all the basic answers go something like uh, no training, no plans, no goals, no consistency, and no projecting. Let's start. Now training can be surmised into two categories. We have off the wall training and we have on the wall training. Off the wall training can be hangboarding, which is probably the most applicable thing you can do to build finger strength for climbing. It could be pull-ups to build general pulling strength. It could be stretching to improve your mobility and movement of freedom to use on the wall as your vehicle to ascend stuff up on the wall. Training could be four by fours where you climb four problems in succession, one after another, in hopes of building some form of power endurance. It could be limit bouldering where you try really hard and fall a lot. Now on the wall training can also be climbing drills such as quiet feet or one arm climbing or just one foot climbing all designed to help you become better at climbing training is basically what you do to help prepare the body for the activity it's rather important really no plans because nobody likes just aimlessly walking through life Today, I'm going to do a hard spray wall session focusing on limit bouldering to improve my limit climbing capabilities. After upon which, I will do some stretching to improve my mobility for being a good human being, yay. The next day, I am going to do active rest by doing a light 30 minute hangboard workout with my feet on the ground, just focusing on making sure my fingers are nice and recruited and happy while actually putting too much force upon them. I'll also do a little bit of light stretching. A plan keeps you honest. It holds you accountable. It is by nature designed to help you a better person become a better climber and it gives you a direction and something to focus on instead of just mindlessly climbing which is exactly not the most efficient for becoming better at climbing if your goal is to become better at climbing. The plan gives you a directive. Now if you're having a little bit of trouble trying to come up with a plan, here's what your climbing plan should consist of. It consists of three things. One, some form of hangboarding to increase your finger strength. Two, some form of general strength exercising stretching shenanigan to make sure your body is nice and healthy and three some form of limit climbing so that you're actually pushing yourself as hard as you can doing the activity that you hope to get better at no goals when you don't have a goal in life you really don't want to do anything now your climbing goal could be a pretty broad or pretty specific broad as in i would like to do all the v4 benchmark problems on the moonboard a little bit more specific, I would like to climb this 1v7 boulder outdoors. Now, when it comes to your climbing goal, there's basically two rules you need to follow. One, it needs to be realistic. Meaning, if you climb v5, you can't say, I want to climb v10 by the end of the year. No, make it more realistic. I would like to climb v6, v7 by the end of the year, right? Make it more realistic. Two, it needs to be ever-present. Ever-present as in, it has to always be within your vicinity or proximity, and it cannot be halfway around the world that you only visit a boulder twice a year. Now, your climbing goals just don't have to be strictly climbing they can also be strength based for example i have a climbing goal of hanging off the 20 millimeters with one arm for five seconds or i have a climbing goal of doing this one moonboard problem that's really hard i will try to avoid having a goal of doing a problem in the general gym climbing area because those routes will get reset periodically and it will totally shock if you showed up and your goal just totally disappeared on you. Therefore, your goal should always be ever present, such as on a system board, like a moon board, a kilter board, a tension board too, because those things are everywhere and they will always be there. They'll never go away. Or it should be a real rock outside because that thing will never go away. And it should be in proximity to you and not halfway across the world. Now, the reason why your goal needs to be within proximity to you is because you need to periodically be able to touch it, test yourself against it, challenge it, and it's there to hold you accountable. And if it's really, really far away, you may start to lose sight of what it really is. No consistency, no matter how great, how excellent, how efficient the program is, if you only do it periodically, no amount of progression will ever come to fruition. If you um, only climb like twice a week, you're not really gonna get better. If you climb one week on and then one week off, you're not really gonna get better. If you climb for six months straight and take a two month break, you're not really ever gonna get that much better. You need that week at the week consistency to get better. I highly recommend at least a minimum of three X per week if you hope to 
see some form of progression that is gonna be there in the future, forever, ideally. No project thing. Well, most people can climb better if they simply look at one problem and gave it more than one attempt. If you really want to find out how excellent you are, try spending 10 sessions on one boulder. It may sound a little bit absurd if you never tried it before, but let's say you're a V4 climber and you want to climb V5. Believe it or not, maybe the only thing separating you from V4 to V5 is 9 sessions. It's probably less, but... And let me tell you something. The amount of learning that happens during those uh, 10 sessions is astronomical because you're learning while you're trying to put out maximum effort. And that creates a certain level of technique that you never had before because most of the times when you go gym climbing you have that normal uh, 30 to 60 minute technique which is pretty fun and cool and always ever present but that nine session technique a grind that's totally different and i think it's that little spark of grinding that separates climbers from each other how many times have you tried a move that you had zero chance of doing only to come back four sessions later then totally crush the move that right there is a confidence builder. I would like to say that the common climber typically tries one climb for about 30 to 60 minutes. And if they get it at the end of the climbing session, they say, yay, good job. I have now become a better climber. But I would simply like to say that you do not become better in one day. That would be too easy. I highly recommend that you try hard boulders that are very hard for you to do. And you may think it's impossible. Preferably one to two grades above your normal comfort level of climbing. Try it for three sessions, and then after those three sessions, you will realize you have made way more progress than you ever thought initially possible, that the only thing you really need to do is put in some forth some effort. And of course, don't overdo it. Don't select a grade above boulder that's three to four grades higher than your preferred because that's just a little bit ridiculous and asking for some trouble to happen. Hope you learned something. Hope you found this useful, and I'll see you next time, partner.